It is that time again already in our day, right? It is time to go to sleep. Remember I told you the last time, that's my favorite night time of day is when I get to go to sleep. And so I have a, another bedtime story for you. This is our second one this year. And the last time I talked to you about a hero that could maybe look a little different than you're typically used to, right? It was the paper bag princess. And, and this week I have another hero that maybe you wouldn't think that um, would, she would look like this as well. Um, so typically we think of heroes as somebody who's swooping in uh, with a cape um, or some mythical figure that maybe could never really be. Well, the people that I'm reading about to you really, they can exist. Um, and these amazing human beings and, and specifically this young lady, she, she does exist. Um, she did exist, she, does, she did amazing things in this world um, and so she is a hero, certainly in our book. So I'm only going to read a few pages to you because I want you to get hooked on this hero. And I'm hoping that you're going to read some of the books that, uh, and specifically this one in our library, uh, but also read some books that are out there about her. She's also on our mural in our cafeteria. See if you can find her. So, but this is called The True Story of Ruby Bridges, and it's by Robert Coles. And you notice there, it's a beautiful hero, right? Oh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about why she is a hero. Ruby Bridges was in a small cab, uh, born in a small cabin near Tylertown, Mississippi. We were very poor, very, very poor, Ruby said. My daddy worked picking crops. We just barely got by there. <clears throat> there were times when we didn't have much to eat. The people who owned the land were bringing in machines to pick the crops, so my daddy lost his job, and that's when we had to move. I remember us leaving. I was four, I think. So you can tell those are quotations. She is actually the one telling a piece of the story. Beautiful illustrations. In 1957, the family moved to New Orleans. Ruby's father became a janitor. Her mother took care of the children during the day. And after they were tucked into bed, Ruby's mother went to work scrubbing floors in a bank. Every Sunday, the family went to church. We wanted our children to be near God's spirit, Ruby's mother said. We wanted them to start feeling close to him from the very start. It's a very, very hardworking family. At that time, black children and white children were separate in schools in New Orleans. The black children were not able to receive the same education as the white children. It wasn't fair, and it was against the nation's law. In 1960, a judge ordered four black girls to go to the white school elementary schools. Three of the girls were sent to McDonough um, 19. Six-year-old Ruby Bridges was sent to first grade in the William France Elementary School. Sad that that is the way our nation was at one point, not too long ago, but it's about to change. Ruby, Ruby's parents were proud that their daughter had been chosen to take part in a very important part in American history. They went to church. We sat there and prayed, Ruby's mother said, that would, we'd all be strong and we'd have courage and we'd get through any trouble and Ruby would be a good girl and she'd hold up her head high and be a credit to her own people and credit to all American people. We prayed long and we prayed hard. On Ruby's first day, a large crowd of angry white people gathered outside the France Elementary School. The people carried signs that they said didn't, didn't want black children in a white school. People called Ruby names. Some wanted to hurt her. The city and the state police did not help Ruby. The President of the United States ordered federal marshals to walk with Ruby into the school building. The marshals protected her. Every day for weeks that turned into months, Ruby experienced that kind of a school day. She walked to the France Elementary School surrounded by marshals, wearing a clean dress and a bow in her hair and carrying her lunch pail. Ruby walked slowly for the first few blocks. As Ruby approached the school, she saw a crowd of people marching up and down the streets. Men and women and children shouted at her. They pushed towards her. The marshals kept them from Ruby by, th um, by threatening to arrest them. Ruby would hurry through the crowd and not say one word. You notice she didn't stop. She kept going. And I'm gonna stop there um, because I want, you to, I want you to think about how much of a hero this young lady is. So we all go to school at the best school in, in the world, right? And we're out there giving high fives and hugs every single day. You know that, because you see me out there, you see Dr. Repass out there, you see teachers out there. 
We welcome every single kid to our school. But can you imagine if that wasn't the case? Can you imagine if that wasn't the situation where you were, you were loved and wanted to be a, be a part of, uh, of a school or a neighborhood because of simply the color of your skin, right? And this girl, this hero, didn't let anybody change who she was. She didn't let them tell her how to live her life. Just like our hero, the paper bag princess, this young lady was a hero too. And because of her courage and, and the courage of many like her, our schools are now a beautiful place for all children to be, to learn, to grow. But it takes people that are, that are the firsts. It takes people that step out and say, you know what, I can do this. I can be the person of this country or these people need me to be. And that's what Ruby Bridges was um, to our country, to her family, to her schools. Um, and through all of us who have, um, all of, us, all of us human beings, no matter what skin color we are, no matter how big our noses are like mine or what color our hair is, we all get to go to school together to learn from one another, to grow together and to become one family. So I encourage you to continue to read about Ruby Bridges. She had an incredible life, did incredible things for this world um, in, our, in our country. And it was all started right there because of the courage that she had. And again, boys and girls, this is a true story. This is a true hero. And look at that. Does she look like Superman? All right, or, or Hulk, or Thor? You, you think of heroes, you think of like Avengers, right? This is a hero more than any of those Avengers. This young lady, um, just like the paper bag princess, showed us all that we simple people, just regular average people, can change the world. Um, and it doesn't take, it, but uh, being a leader and doing the right thing and having courage to do so and standing up to be you. So, all right. Um, thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. I hope that you have a great night's sleep and we'll see you tomorrow. Good night.